Welcome back guys, this is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we're going to take an in-depth look at JS8 call messages. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. A couple of weeks back, I brought you guys the JS8 Call Overview video where I walked you through the settings and kind of the basic layout of the application. Today, I want to take an in-depth look at the different types of JS8 Call messages and which ones are better than others for reliability. Let's go ahead and jump over to the whiteboard so I can walk you through this. The first message type that I want to cover is a direct message. Now, this is when one station can directly hear another station. So, if we've got my station here on the bottom right-hand side, and I want to communicate with KF7VUT, provided we can hear one another, we've got good propagation and whatnot between us, provided we can hear one another, then I can simply send a direct message to KF7VUT. If his station successfully receives it and decodes it, then he is also going to acknowledge that message. And I will see that acknowledgement and know that it was delivered correctly. Let's jump over to the Raspberry Pi and take a look at this in action. Now, for this demo, I'm going to send the message to N5YHM. We'll go into the list here by clicking on the button and then choosing to send a message direct to N5YHM. So you'll see that it has his call sign and then MSG in there and then the actual message. It'll take this uh, another 20 seconds or so to send out and then we should see an acknowledgement from his station if the message was correctly decoded. And there you can see that I have received the acknowledgement from his station. So we know that message was left for him and he decoded, his station decoded that correctly. Now, the next type of message that we're going to talk about is a relay message. So in this particular case, my station and KF7VUT are both online, but due to propagation uh, between us, we cannot hear one another at this current time. However, we've got another station, W8APP. I can hear W8APP, and KF7VUT can also hear W8APP. In this particular case, I would go ahead and uh, send my message to W8APP and ask him to relay that message to KF7VUT. Just like in the previous example, if KF7VUT decodes it correctly, he will send an acknowledgement or his station will send an acknowledgement and that acknowledgement gets automatically routed through the same station that I used for the relay. So he would send an acknowledgement to W8APP who would then relay that acknowledgement to my particular station. Now, this works uh, pretty much as well as the first example that I showed you guys. It's just a little bit more involved uh, because of we're adding that third station into the equation. So it can be a little bit trickier to get these messages to go through versus uh, a direct message where I'm just going from my station to or direct to the receiving station. Let's take a look at the way this works on the Raspberry Pi. Now, in this particular case, I am going to use N5YHM again, but I'm going to relay the message back to myself. So we'll go up here and choose this particular option. But after the greater than sign, I'm going to enter my call sign, which is who I want the message relayed to. Then I'm going to give it a space and I'm going to say MSG, another space, and the actual message, which in this particular case is just test message. 
We'll go ahead and transmit that out. It's going to take that about 30 seconds to get out. And then we should see N5 wet YHM relay that message back to myself. This gets a little bit confusing because I am relaying the message direct back to my station, uh, but it makes it a little easier to see on video. You just kind of have to follow the bouncing ball a bit through this demo. Now we can see the relayed message starting to come back through. So you'll see that it's uh, from NY, or N5YHM coming to my station, KM4ACK, and then it gives me the message, uh, which was just test message. Then it's going to tell me who the originating station was. In this case, again, uh, I'm talking to myself, so it gives me my own call sign. You'll notice it also gives us a pop-up box. Now, the box will go away when the countdown timer, you'll see it right there by the OK button. Once that countdown timer goes or uh, runs down, this box will disappear. But you'll also notice the black flag by N5YHM. That indicates that we have a message that he has sent us. In addition to that, you'll see that my station is sending an acknowledgement uh, back, and I'm actually acknowledging my own message, but it's going to go to N5YHM, who is then going to relay that acknowledgement back to myself. And there you can see the acknowledgement on the screen. Now, if you wanted to read the message, you would simply right-click on uh, N5YHM and click Show Inbox. That would show you the incoming message and show you who it was from. In this case, the message was from myself. Now, let's look at another type of message with JS8 Call. This is one where not only can we not hear KF7VUT direct, he is not even online right now, so his station is shut down. He's off doing something else. I can send a message to W8APP and ask him to store the message for KF7VUT. Then later, uh, let's say my station is offline and he has come back online, he sends out a heartbeat. If W8APP hears his heartbeat, then W8APP will acknowledge the heartbeat and give him a message ID number in that acknowledgement. That would let KF7VUT know that he has a message waiting, and then he could request that message from W8APP. So once again, we're going to use N5YHM's station here, and we're going to ask him to store a message for W8APP. So we'll choose this option here in the drop-down box, uh, message to, call sign, and message. It'll populate uh, the, the template inside the message box. We'll just go ahead and fill out the call sign of who we want the message sent to, or who we want to leave the message for, and then we'll fill out the message itself. Go ahead and hit the send button, or you can also hit return on the keyboard. Now, provided that he got a good decode on our message, we should see an acknowledgement come back here on the screen. There it is, right there in the center box, acknowledging that he has the message for W8APP. Now, the one thing I don't like about this particular method, um, if both stations that are trying to communicate cannot hear the third party station. So uh, again, in this example here, W8APP is our third party station. If I can hear W8APP and communicate and store a message, but KF7VUT can never hear W8APP, then he will not know that I have stored a message for him at the W8APP station. So you really need to do some pre-coordinating to make the best use of this particular situation. You would both want to kind of see, if I knew I wanted to communicate with KF7VUT on a regular basis, we would kind of need to watch JSA call and see who we could hear 
between us on a pretty frequent basis. That way I wouldn't store a message on a station that KF7VUT may never actually be able to hear. So up until this point, all of the messages that we have been working with do not require an internet connection amongst any of the parties. So neither the sending, the receiving, or a possible relay station needs an internet connection in order for those messages to be delivered successfully. Now let's go over a different set of messages. These, though, do require at least the receiving station to have an internet connection. All of this works off of the APRS system. Now, the easiest way to compose these is with an application like JS8 Call Utilities that Mark M0IAX has provided for us, and you can install this application with Buildapi. Tell you what, what I'm going to do, let's move that over to the side, and I'm going to go ahead and open up JS8 Call as well and pull this back up to the top so we can see both of these at the same time. JS8 Call Utilities allows us to send several different types of messages. We can do emails, SMS, or direct APRS messages to another APRS-capable radio. This application makes it super simple to do that. So for this particular demo, I'm going to choose uh, APRS, and then I'm going to tell it who I want to send my message to. So we'll just send this to km 4 ack hyphen. Two, and I'll go ahead and compose this message. So I've got test for video there. Now there's two different options we can use here. We can either set the text in JS8 call or we can transmit with JS8 call. For this particular demo, I'm going to choose to set the JS8 call text. What that's going to do is populate that message over here in my outgoing messages box of JS8 call. And it'll give us a message that it has been sent over there, and you can see that outgoing message right here. Now, if instead you chose to transmit with JS8 call, the only difference is, is it would go ahead and move that message into your outgoing box and click the send button for you. Since I only set it in JS8 call, I will go ahead and click the send button manually to get that message sent out. Now, the only real downside to this type of message is you don't get an acknowledgement that anybody actually received your message and injected it into the APRS IS system. So it's kind of a, almost a shot in the dark, if you will. Let's go ahead and open up the Digipeter and lo and behold, there's our message that we just sent out from JS8 Call. So you could send this to a Digipeter. You could send it to somebody that uh, maybe had an APRS-capable HT or an APRS-capable mobile rig and get one-way communication going between the two of you. Uh, if they try to reply to this message, it will not come back into JS8 Call. So there's another downside to using this type of message. All right, guys, well, there you have it. I hope this clears up any confusion you may have had about what type of message is what in JS8 Call and how you might utilize each of them. And hopefully it'll shed some light on which ones are more reliable than others. We'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.